I made this video to explain a concept which is difficult to explain on a whiteboard and somewhat nicer to explain by animation. We've discussed how a system of linear equations can be represented as an augmented matrix, and the manipulation of those equations has been described in terms of elementary row operations. Now that we know how to think about matrices as linear transformations, let's take a new look at elementary row operations from that perspective. Consider the system of equations. The way we'd solve this, classically, is we pivot below the x, so we take the second row, multiply the first row by an appropriate constant, negative 3, add them, and the x's cancel. I'm going to refer to this process as a pivot operation. It's what we do when we have a pivot, and we want to eliminate the stuff beneath it. Now, since I assume that you've seen all this before, our task now is going to be to visualize this operation. What is pivoting in terms of linear transformations? From the outset, the system of equations that we were trying to solve is to take the vector b, which I used to denote the right-hand side, and express it as a linear combination of the vector 1, 3 and negative 5, 1. So it stands to reason that some multiple of this guy plus some multiple of that guy gets us to b. And the goal is to figure out x and y, the amounts by which we have to scale the two vectors u1 and u2. So that's our goal. Now, what does it mean when we pivot? What we have here, after we pivot, is a new linear transformation. Here's what the transition looks like as we go from the old linear transformation to the new one. Even after pivoting, the problem remains the same. Express b as a linear combination of u1 and u2. Only now the problem's easier because u1 is just 1, 0 now. Now we can rescale the second row by a factor of 1 16th. Here's what that looks like in terms of linear transformations. Now we have a much easier problem. We're still trying to write b as a linear combination of u1 and u2, but the problem is much simpler now. We'll finish off the elimination by eliminating above the pivot y, and the result looks like this. At this point, it's clear that we need to rescale this vector by 2 and keep this vector at 1, and so this is our solution. x equals 2, y equals 1. This view of row reduction is useful because it shows that pivot operations are, in effect, multiplication by shear transformations. Shear transformations don't change area. That is to say, they don't affect the determinant. And so pivot operations on a matrix don't change its determinant. So after pivoting below the 1, we get this new matrix, whose determinant is the same as before. When we rescale by a factor of 1 16th, this does change the area. This isn't a pivot operation, this is a scaling operation. So it changed the area by a factor of 1 16th. Finally, we can pivot away the negative 5 using another shear transformation. But we know the area of this transformation. It's the identity transformation, and the area, or determinant, is 1. So our unknown area divided by 16, the amount that we multiplied before, is 1. That means that the question mark, the determinant we were trying to find of the original transformation, is 16. In conclusion, we have a determinant algorithm. You can row reduce a matrix to 0. Pivot operations don't change the determinant, so just keep track of any scalings you do. The determinant is going to be the reciprocal of any scaling factors that you used multiplied together. Again, our problem worked out like this. First we sheared, which didn't change the determinant. Then we scaled by 1 16th vertically, giving us our first scaling factor of 1 16th. And finally we sheared, giving us a determinant of 1. So we concluded, taking the reciprocal of any scalings that we used, that the determinant of our original transformation was 16th.